Oh, just a short while ago, we also spoke with defense and government analyst Amir Oren. There were indications that the Israeli press uh, was given that he has managed to escape even further to the uh, West Bank under the Palestinian Authority. This was apparently done in order to make him believe that uh, he is not under surveillance. All the while, the Israeli um, uh, Shimbet and police intelligence assets have been uh, focused on his um, home area until finally um, earlier this afternoon uh, he was cornered. And a recap of the hour's breaking news here for anyone who may have just joined us now. The killer from last week's Tel Aviv terror attack left three people dead after a week-long manhunt now has been killed in his hometown in northern Israel. Police cornered him. He was hiding in a mosque, came out firing, and the police shot him dead. You're seeing the images now of his body here, these, these edited images now. Uh, we're joined in the studio by our correspondent, Danny Swibel, who's covered the story from the beginning for us in the field primarily. Danny, uh, let's talk about the city of Tel Aviv here now again and how it's been affected by this attack. Uh, Tel Aviv obviously has known attacks in the past, but nonetheless is known within the country as being somewhat of a bubble city now. Has that bubble burst? You know, it definitely cast a shadow on uh, Tel Aviv, which is uh, pretty much a carefree city. But again, as we've mentioned before, that Tel Aviv is not a complete stranger to violence and violent acts being perpetrated against its, uh, some of its citizens. Uh, even two years ago, in, less than two years ago, in 2014, when it was an Israeli operation uh, against Hamas, it, uh, Tel Aviv was receiving rocket fire. And two years before that, and Tel Aviv also, in the early 2000s and in the late 90s, had a series of incidents, including bus bombings, uh, the targeting of Israeli Central Mall, where about 13 people got killed. So again, Tel Aviv people are not new to it. It's not a complete bubble, but this definitely did cast a shadow because it was in the middle of a Friday afternoon, which is a very busy shopping day in Tel Aviv. So residents are definitely asking first, how could something like this have happened? Especially when Melchim has had a, a past, a criminal record. Right. He was in prison for five years for taking a soldier's gun, and he did have connection to who was actually his uh, uncle who was killed by Israeli forces. So this is believed to have been a revenge attack. So um, that is one element of people's concern is just how something like this could have happened, how he could have made it all the way to Tel Aviv without security forces realizing this. And it does unfortunately cast a bit of a shadow on um, people's comfort when it comes to, you know, Israeli Arabs working within the city. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes can bring out people's darkest uh, thoughts and feelings of perhaps distrust against their fellow Israeli citizens, but just who happen to be Arab. So we will see in, in later weeks and months if this has an effect. And obviously, there's the hopes that it isn't. There isn't any sort of a tension between Israeli Jews and Israeli Arabs or Israeli Muslims, because uh, this is one individual who did it. He is believed to have been a lone wolf. And uh, it will, remains to be seen if this is part of some bigger thing. But again, um, when anything like this happens, it definitely casts a shadow. Maybe not for long. Tel Aviv people still continue to go to the bars and clubs in mass, whether it's raining or some a killer's on the loose. But again, it will be on people's thoughts. 